Now in order to understand how stars form, we're going to need to apply the ideal gas law and we're also going to need to know a little bit about adiabatic processes. So if we consider a gas, there's all types of different processes that that gas can undergo. So for example, it could go undergo an isovolumetric process, which is something which happens while the volume remains constant. So for example, if we applied temperature, heated up the gas, then its temperature changes, but its volume remains constant. So that's known as an isovolumetric process. Another type of process is an isothermal process, which is one which takes place at a constant temperature. But the one we're interested in right now is an adiabatic process. So an adiabatic process is a process in which no heat is transferred to or from the gas. So you may think if no heat's being transferred to or from the gas, it would mean that the temperature remains constant. But this isn't true. The temperature can change during an adiabatic process. So what causes adiabatic processes to happen? Well, in the world around us, there's two common ways to have something undergo an adiabatic process. One way is to do something really fast. So if you shake up a soft drink bottle and then take off the lid really quickly, the gas inside the bottle will expand rapidly. And so if you feel the air around the top of the bottle, it'll actually feel cold as this process takes place. So that's an example of an adiabatic process where we don't have any heat transfer because this was so fast. And we know that heat goes from a hot body to a cold body, but it takes time for this to happen. So if we do a process really quickly, there is no time and so there is no heat transfer, but there can be a change in temperature. The other way to have something undergo an adiabatic process is to do it in something which is really well insulated. So for example, a thermos tends to stop heat transfer between the contents inside the thermos and the exterior. So if we did something inside a thermos, this would be an adiabatic process. Now the best insulator of all is space. So when we're considering star formation, the new star is surrounded by space, which is a really good insulator. So it takes a long time for heat to transfer away from the star into the surrounding universe. It can slowly over time radiate that energy, but that tends to be really small compared to all the other energy transfers that are taking place. So we do have a couple of equations that we can write down to describe adiabatic processes. One of these is we can write, well, PV to the gamma, where gamma is some constant, which just depends on what type of gas we're discussing, is equal to a constant. And we can also use the ideal gas law to rewrite this one as TV to the gamma minus one is equal to constant, which gives us a relationship between how the temperature changes as the volume changes if a gas is undergoing an adiabatic process. So this tells us that if something shrinks down suddenly and becomes really small, then the temperature has to increase to balance out that decreasing volume. So this will be important when we're looking at star formation.